The Battle of Lebabia Ridge was fought from 20 the 23rd of June 1943 in the territory of New Guinea during World War II. Part of the Salamuale campaign, the battle involved Australian and Japanese troops who clashed on the ridge, which was about 20 kilometers south of Salamua, near Mubo, over the course of several days. The battle was fought in conjunction with several other actions in the region as the Allies attempted to draw Japanese attention away from Leh, where they launched seaborne landings in mid-September 1943, in conjunction with airborne landings around Nadzab. The fighting around Lebabia Ridge took place at the same time as the Battle of Mubo, after two battalions of Japanese infantry launched a counter-attack on a depleted Australian company. The Australians, supported by Royal Australian Air Force fighter bombers, managed to hold off the initial Japanese attacks before being reinforced by another depleted company. Fighting continued over the course of three days before the Japanese withdrew. Chapter 1 – Background In March 1943, Australian troops from the 27th Infantry Battalion had pushed forward from war, which had been secured in late January and set up a defensive position on Lebabia Ridge a 3,000-foot feature about 20 kilometers south of Salamua, near Mubo, which was situated around the Baitoai and Biowim rivers that was, according to historian John Miller, strategically important as it provided clear observation of Nassau Bay to the southeast, Baitoai Ridge to the north, and the Komaitam track which served as the line of communications from Salamua to the Japanese facing the Australians. After several failed attacks on the Pimple in early May during the fighting around Mubbo, Captain Leslie Tatterson's company, consisting of just 65 men, had withdrawn from the Pimple towards Lebabia Ridge, establishing a position was forward of the main Australian base camp on the western end of the ridge. On the 9th of May, they came under heavy attack as the Japanese launched a concerted counter-attack over the course of several days. It was eventually turned back, with heavy Japanese casualties. Chapter 2 – Battle On 23 May, the commander of the Australian 17th Brigade, Brigadier Murray Moton, issued orders for the 26th Infantry Battalion, under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Frederick Wood, to relieve the 2 7ths around Lebabia Ridge. The advanced elements of the battalion stepped off on 27 May. Moving along the narrow Buisaville track, the going was slow, while they waited for their relief, the two sevenths continued patrolling the area, and the day that the two sixths set out towards them, there was further fighting around the pimple when a small group of Australians were engaged by a Japanese strong point during a reconnaissance patrol, resulting in the loss of two Australians killed. The two sixths arrived on the 11th of June, after which the two sevenths moved back towards War and Bololo where they were placed into the role of divisional reserve. Upon effecting their relief of the two sevenths, Wood positioned his battalion with companies at Matmat -Mat Hill, Way Parley and the Saddle, while battalion headquarters was positioned at Guadagassel. Another company, the company, under the command of Captain Walter Dexter occupied Lebabia Ridge, occupying a position further up the slope, but further south than that which Tatterson's company had held. They had been dispatched earlier in May to support the two sevenths of right flank, and had carried out several reconnaissance patrols towards Dualai and the coast, to gather information prior to the landing of U.S. troops around Nassau Bay. In late May, the Japanese High Command determined that they would attempt to force the Australians off Lebabia Ridge, and began making preparations for an assault, rotating their forces in the area, with the exhausted 102nd Infantry Regiment, which had been fighting the Australians since the Battle of War, being replaced by two battalions of the 66th Infantry Regiment. Under the command of Colonel Katsutoshi Akari. Supplies and ammunition were brought up towards the position along the steep slope from the Komaitam Ridge, and on 20 June, Japanese patrols from the 66th, with guides from the 102nd, began probing the Australian position on Lebabia Ridge, which was held by about 80 men. Japanese sappers diffused the booby traps that the Australians had created out of piano wire and hand grenades, but being unfamiliar with the mechanisms of the Australian grenades, left them in place, rather than using them against the defenders. Sporadic firing occurred throughout the day, but no major attack developed. The following day, the 21st of June, 
Australian patrols noticed signs of Japanese activity along the track towards the observation post that had been established further east along the ridge. Around 7.30 the telephone line to the post was cut and shortly afterwards, Japanese troops approaching the main Australian position began setting off booby traps that had been set up as early warning devices. Around 1400 hours the Japanese launched an assault from the north and northeast of the Australian position, supported by mortars. This was repelled, but followed up by another attack in the early afternoon, including a bayonet charge. Over the course of the afternoon, a total three attacks were made to the sound of bugle calls. While intended to frighten the Australian soldiers, these actually served to warn the defenders of their approach. These attacks were as turned back and during the night the Australian company was reinforced by another platoon dash C Company's 13 platoon, under Corporal Keith Mew, consisting of about 70 men. As it grew dark, the Australians sent out a patrol to make contact with their forward positions, and subsequently found that they had been wiped out in the attack. Meanwhile, amidst heavy rain, the Japanese recovered their wounded and continued to reduce the booby traps in front of the Australian positions. Over the course of 22 and the 23rd of June more Japanese attacks took place as Akari's two battalions from the 66th Infantry Regiment, consisting of about 1,500 men, attempted to take the position. Despite numerical superiority, these attacks were repelled by the Australians who received close air support from Royal Australian Air Force Bristol Bowfighter aircraft, which strafed the attacking Japanese infantrymen after the Australians marked their forward positions with smoke. During the 22nd of June, the Japanese brought up a mountain gun, but this proved inaccurate and ineffective, with only two rounds landing within the Australian position, meanwhile, probing attacks on the Australian flanks were broken up by Australian mortar fire. The fighting continued early the following day, with the Japanese laying down heavy machine gun and mortar fire, but this was only designed to help cover their withdrawal. The fighting subsequently ceased early in the afternoon of 23 June when the Japanese, lacking further reinforcements with which to continue the fight, discontinued their attacks. Chapter 3 – Aftermath Casualties amounted to 41 or 42 killed and 131 wounded for the Japanese, and 11 killed and 12 wounded for the Australians. Left mainly to his own devices during the battle, for his leadership during the main Japanese assault on the Australian positions around La Babia Ridge, Dexter was later awarded the Distinguished Service Order, while several of the Australian platoon commanders, Lieutenants Edward Exton and Lawrence Roach, received military crosses, and one of the platoon sergeants, Sergeant John Hederman, received a military medal. The Australian brigade commander, Moton, later singled Dexter out for praise, stating that he had taken every trick during the battle. One of his peers, Captain Joe Gullett described him as a too exacting to be popular although he was a thorough soldier, a good trainer of men and a painstaking tactician. He later went on to command the 61st Infantry Battalion. Following actions around La Babia Ridge, further fighting in the Salamua area followed as the Allied advance towards the coast pushed the Japanese back. Advancing towards Salamua in an effort to draw reinforcements away from Ley, where a seaborne landing was planned for mid September in conjunction with an airborne landing at Nadzab to capture the town in a pincer movement, further actions were fought by Australian and US forces at Bobjubai. Mount Tambu, Nassau Bay, and Roosevelt Ridge. Salamoa was eventually taken on the 11th of September 1943. They fell shortly afterwards. In the aftermath, the Japanese withdrew towards the north coast. The Australians subsequently pursued them into the Markham and Ramu valleys.